Hey y'all, welcome to He Walks With Us Everywhere. I'm Tracy. Um, so today I, I just wanted to come on here and talk a little bit about, well, a lot of little things and some bigger things too. So first of all, I want to say this, okay? So I want to understand, and maybe somebody on the far left can explain it in the comments below if, you know, there's trolls out there. Why is it that during this whole corona lockdown baloney stuff going on, why is it that the authoritative powers that be and the far left are so utterly concerned with our safety and well-being and survival of this pandemic, you know, but there's like no concern whatsoever about abortions. So I don't understand the logic. You know, you, you're so concerned about saving so many lives and being muzzled so that nobody can hear what you're saying or see your facial expressions, right? So concerned about that. But it's okay, in fact, it's legal and lawful for us to go out and kill babies during this whole thing. Do you see the insanity, y'all? I, I mean, it's complete insanity. It's a, I was watching a news article about a waterfall in Australia, in South Wales, that's flowing backwards or appearing to flow backwards because of the high winds and like this waterfall is literally going backwards. And I just looked at my daughter and I said, the world is completely upside down. Like we live in upside down land. And what blows my mind is how many are still asleep. And if they're not asleep, if they're awake, how many are so unwilling to speak up and to stand up for that which is holy and good and right in the eyes of the Lord. You know, he is very specific about being uh, not ashamed, unashamed, and unafraid you know in scripture it's repeated many times do not fear do not fear and this is what I see with a lot of the you know quote-unquote Christian population today is there is such an amount of compliance it's absolutely mind-blowing like let's comply let's not stir the water let's not ruffle feathers Jesus came to bring a sword and not peace he tells us that he says if you think I came to be bring peace you're mistaken I came to bring a sword, you know, for mother to rise up against daughter, for brother to rise up against father, for friends to rise up against each other because of the divide, wheat and tares. We are told to come out from this world and be separate. We look nothing like it. So everything, what I take is that everything that this world says is good and is right and is acceptable and is just is the absolute opposite in God's kingdom. If the masses are flocking to it, then I can be assured that it is against God's holy word, okay? Let's take, for example, uh, today, news reports saying that, and actually for the last week, these CNN channels and other channels coming up and making it a point to discuss the videos that were shown of the missile flying into Beirut right before and on impact of that explosion, you know, they're covering it and saying, oh, they're edited, they're doctored videos, they're false videos. Really, CNN? Re okay, so let me understand this. You tell us all that these protests in Portland are peaceful, and yet we see reports showing that they are rioting, that they're going into traditional neighborhoods and being combative and hitting old ladies in the face with paint, and that they are obviously stirring up a cancer that's just growing with Antifa and BLM, right? CNN, you're reporting that that is all in the name of peaceful protesting? Are you flipping insane? Like, and are we insane if we actually believe this? So here's what I know, y'all. If CNN or any of the other media, major media, mainstream, Mockingbird News, whatever you wanna call it, if they're saying that these things are occurring, we know that is the complete opposite of what they're saying. They've already shown us that. Remember masks? You know how, oh, it's so important. It's so important. Just months before, they're all reporting about, don't go out and buy masks. You know, these need to be reserved for PPE for the frontline workers and the general surgeon saying, don't go buy masks. And then other people coming up saying they, they're ineffective. Fauci saying it's ineffective. And then a couple months later, the narrative completely shifts. And now it's everybody better wear a mask. And you, you must hate everybody if you don't wear a mask. And now today, you know, in this week, again, more reports are showing that it's not, in fact, gonna, like, benefit you, right? Like, CNN, 
right i mean it is so back and forth wishy-washy it's absolutely ridiculous y'all you know study groups coming out of different universities they are studying the impacts of wearing masks and what they've found is that there are so many out there that are ineffective in fact they said that the masks could actually spread this virus even more because the mask that they're wearing from like homemade mask, whatever, cotton, whatever it is that they're using will actually break the virus particles up into smaller bits, thus emitting even more particles into the air. Shut up. Like I'm so over it y'all. Anyway, that's my rant for the day. But what I want to get onto that's really pressing on my heart is what the father has to say in Jeremiah 23, about false prophets and right now i am speaking to all of the false prophets out there which there are a plethora of them right now okay there always have been but it's just ramping up listen to this judgment against false prophets this is found in jeremiah chapter 23 starting i'll start at verse 9. mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets all my bones shake i am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome because of Yahweh and because of the words of his holiness for the land is full of adulterers for because of swearing the land mourneth aren't we seeing the land mourn right now y'all birth pangs the land is crying out from the bloodshed from the innocent bloodshed from the sin of this world the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up and their course is evil and their force is not right for both prophet and priest are profane yea in my house have i found their wickedness saith yahweh and if for those who don't know yahweh is a word to say the lord it's just another way of saying the lord wherefore their way shall be that shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness they shall be driven on and fall therein for i will bring evil upon them even the year of their visitation saith yahweh and i have seen folly in the prophets of samaria they prophesied in baal and caused my people israel to err i have seen also in the prophets of jerusalem an horrible thing they commit adultery and walk in lies they strengthen also the hands of evil doers that none doth return from his wickedness they are all of them unto me as sodom and the inhabitants thereof as gomorrah therefore thus saith yahweh of hosts concerning the prophets behold i will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall for from the prophets of jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land thus saith yahweh of hosts hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you they make you vain they speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of yahweh they say still unto them that despise me yahweh hath said ye shall have peace and they say unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart no evil shall come upon you for who hath stood in the counsel of yahweh and hath perceived and heard his word who hath marked his word and beareth it behold a whirlwind of yahweh is gone forth in fury even a grievous whirlwind it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked the anger of Yahweh shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned from their evil way and from the evil of their doings am i am i an elohim at hand saith yahweh and not an elohim afar off can any hide himself in secret places that i shall not see him saith yahweh 
do I not fill between heaven, do I not fill heaven and earth, said Yahweh. I have heard what the prophets said that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith Yahweh? Is not my word like as of fire, said Yahweh, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith Yahweh, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith Yahweh, that use their tongues and say, He saith, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith Yahweh. Okay, so the father is done. He's done. He says, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith Yahweh. And aren't we seeing that, y'all? These false prophets, these false pastors out there who are professing to know God, but denying his power. That's what we're seeing. They're denying his power. They're saying, you know, oh, I had this vision and I had this dream and the Lord spoke to me. God tells us right there in Jeremiah, he did not send them. They are prophesying lies. They are not convicting hearts by speaking his word. There is absolutely no need for a pastor or a leader or a person who is in some sort of leadership over a flock to say anything but the solid word of the Lord, y'all. So all of these references to sports and, you know, games and politics and who knows what else and prosperity, lies. They are prophesying lies and they're using the name of the Lord our God, Most High. How long? How long do you think he's going to allow it to continue? He's already casting judgment on the earth. He is done. He is sick and tired of these false prophets out there leading his people astray. You want to talk about being led to the slaughter? That's exactly what's happening. People are dying, literally and figuratively. There is a spiritual death occurring that's been occurring for so long. And the Father sees every single bit of it. So if you're one of those false prophets out there prophesying lies, using the name of the Lord Most High, woe to you and caution to you. Stop doing what you're doing. Stop spreading lies. These people who are preaching about prosperity and about a tribulation, pre-trib, mid-trib rapture, that is not biblical. There is a scripture that they like to use, okay? And I believe it's in Thessalonians. It talks about that he will keep you from the hour of temptation. Do you know what the word keep means? Look it up in Strong's Concordance. Keep means to keep safe, to keep safe from harm, to keep free from harm. It does not mean to physically remove. That is a modern conception, a modern idea that has got no place in scripture. It is a lie. And it will lead people into a salvation issue when the days grow darker than what they are right now. And it's coming, y'all. I am not an alarmist. I am not a fear monger. What I'm telling you is the truth of what the Lord's put in my heart. We have got to get ready and have eyes to see and ears to hear. Do not listen to the lies out there. Get into his word alone. Not some new standard translation, not new living translation or NIV or any of that stuff. Go to King James Version or an older version, whatever is the oldest that you can find, stay in that place because they have been changing scripture for decades and decades and decades. Did you know that the second commandment of the Bible about not creating graven images of anything on the earth or in heaven above was removed from Catholicism. Did you know that? 
They removed the second commandment. How do you think God views that? Okay, so that means statues, praying to a statue, praying to anything other than God himself. It is an abomination, and the abomination of desolation has come. So y'all, get in his word. Study for yourself. Look up translations. Look up the word. Get a concordance. Look it up online if you have to. And see for yourself what these words of old actually meant in context. Not taken out of context. Not to fit what our itching ears and our itching eyes want to hear and see. But the true reality and the true nature of our Heavenly Father. He's given us all the tools we need, y'all. We just have to have a willingness to seek Him out in spirit and in truth. I love y'all.